Young Show. Hello. Last year, one of our national magazines gave an account of an actual survey that had been conducted by Drs. Bugenthal and Zellin of the University of California. We were so fascinated with the idea that, well, the result is our story tonight. The percentages and findings quoted in our story tonight are factual. For dramatic purposes, however, the discovery of the question and the characters involved have been fictionized. Attention, attention, everyone. We're going to play a game. Oh, no. Oh, now it's a perfectly fascinating one. You'll adore it. We played it in the East last week. They'll love it, won't they, Edgar? It's such fun. Now, now, you don't have to do a thing, darlings. You just sit there and digest and answer one question. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is written out on the top of each slip of paper. Give me an easy one, will you, Harriet? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Philip. It's the same question on each paper. Now, as soon as you read the question, you just jot down the very first three answers that come into your mind. Now, remember, no cheating. Your very first thought, no matter what. Here you are, dear. Just a simple question. Oh, yes. Oh, Margaret, you've played the game before, and it's no fun the second time. Sorry. Oh, I thought this would be something new out here. Well, never mind, darling. Just jot down the answers from the first time you played it. Yes. The first time I played it, it was hardly a game. Just a simple question. Just one simple question, but oh, what it took to put it together. One question. Just one simple, terse question. That's what I want to build my whole thesis on. I want a question that will reveal the individual's deepest impression of himself in the shortest possible time. A one-question psychoanalysis. A one-question psychoanalysis? Yes. Oh, Margaret. Oh, well, no, no, I don't mean a complete analysis, but... but if I can come up with the right question that will strike at the core and, uh, well, give me an idea of how the individual feels about himself, yes. I'll have a fairly good tabulation of this whole town's psychological state if I can get to enough people. That's why the question's got to be short. Very short, very short and to the point. And it's got to penetrate. It must have a certain shock value that will make the person's thoughts go racing to the core of their personality. It's that first flash. It's a miracle you want. Oh, not at all. It's that doctor's degree I want. And with the right question behind my thesis, I'll have it. Excuse me. Yes? Oh, yes, she's right here. Margaret. Hmm? Your housekeeper wants to speak to you. Yes, Millie. I forgot to check with you this morning about dinner tonight. There's a leftover lamb, and I thought perhaps I might do something with the... Millie... I am right in the middle of a conference with Professor Green. I'll call you later. All right. Yes, yeah, I'll manage somehow. What time will you be home? Well, uh, I won't be home for dinner. That's right. Will you tell Mr. Channing I'm sorry and please not to wait for me? I'll be with Professor Green and we're going to a lecture. That's right. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Now, uh, where were we? Margaret, are you sure you want to go back into teaching? Oh, sure, I'm sure. Takes up an awful lot of your time, you know. Oh, Professor, you need teachers. And my children are growing up. My goodness, the first thing you know, they're all going to be off and married. And then what am I going to do with my spare time? Oh, look, I don't like knitting. But I do love teaching. Don't tell my husband this, will you? But I've missed it. Just the thought of starting this thesis oh, makes me feel like I'm living again. And the very idea of getting a doctor's degree, ooh, that makes me absolutely heady. I just love it. Uh, you better take it easy. I can't. Oh, I've got to get this thesis well on its way while the girls are still in camp and Terry's in summer school. Well, you don't have to have that doctor's degree to go back to teaching, you know. I know. But I want it. I've always wanted it. You better not let it get out of proportion. First things first. Professor Green got that I haven't. <laughs> Bill, you should be sound asleep by now. So should you. I know. 
Uh, honey, we were supposed to go over to the hills tonight to look at their movies of Spain. I'm sorry, but, well, after the lecture, Professor Green and I got to talking about my thesis, and, well, you know. Really, Margaret, I don't see how you could forget. We, we talked about it just this morning. I'm sorry, Phil. You just slipped my mind. <laughs> I guess way down deep inside, I really don't like home movies. Well, way down deep inside, how do you feel about standing your husband up? I feel terrible. Darling, please, bear with me for a while, will you? I've just got so much work to do, I, I can't concentrate on anything else, all right? Don't go back to teaching. Oh, honey, make up your mind. Last month, you thought it was a wonderful idea. Well, last month, I wasn't spending so much time alone. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. What's important to you? you? Your kids? No, 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 I don't mean that. I mean, well, what's your core? What makes you what you are to you yourself? What's that again? Well, what do you think of you? Are you? I mean, I mean, who are you to you? Who are you? <gasps> That's it. Who are you? Who am I? Yes. Now your first thoughts, quickly. Who are you? Well, Philip Reed Channing. Yes, and? And? Well, uh, give me three answers if you can. First, you're Philip Reed Channing, and? Philip Reed Channing. Yes. I'm married to a brilliant, beautiful creature by the name of Margaret, who gave me three fine, healthy children. And your third answer? I'm a lawyer. A darned good one. That is just wonder. What? Well, in 30 seconds, I can make a pretty good guess that you are a very well-adjusted human being. Oh. By your first answer. Why? Well, Phil, what was your first answer? My name, of course, Philip Reed Channing. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Not of course at all. By answering your name first, you indicated that you are acutely conscious of yourself as a person, and that has a direct bearing on how well-adjusted you are. <laughs> Just basic psychology. Uh, basic psychology? Mm-hmm. Just the more acutely conscious you are of yourself, well, the better acquainted you are with your inner urges and desires, and the better able you are to provide them with expression. Margaret, if someone walks up to you and asks who you are, what else are you going to answer but your name? I don't know. That's what I'm going to find out. Hey, now, wait a minute. Where are you going? I just want to see if Millie's still up. Yes? Millie, it's Mrs. Channing. Could I ask you something? Just a moment. Oh, Millie, I'm sorry to disturb you so late, but there's a question I want to ask you. Now, uh, will you pretend that I am from the university and I'm conducting a survey from the psychology department? Now, I want to ask you one question, but I want you to give me three answers. Now, your answers may be anything you wish, sentences, words, phrases, anything at all. Do you understand? No. Well, <laughs> you will. The question is, who are you? Who am I? Who am I? I'm a widow. Yes. I'm a woman who works hard for my money. I'm Mrs. Warren Beckwith. Yes. Well, thank you, Willie. Good night. Good night. Hey, Mom, what are you doing up? Oh. I was just having a word with Millie. You better get back to bed. Go ahead. I heard you. I thought maybe something was wrong. No, dear, nothing's wrong. I'm sorry I woke you up. Oh, I was awake. Uh, Terry. Who are you? Huh? Who are you? You have three answers. Mom, it's awful late to be playing games. Hey, this is no game. Go on. Answer any way you please. Seriously? Seriously? Well... 
I'm Terry Channing. I'm a boy. And I got such a thick skull, I gotta go to summer school. Is that right? Well, there isn't any right or wrong. But every answer is right for you. It's kind of a, a one-question psychoanalysis. You mean I don't win anything? Happy life, I hope. Well, sometimes you're pretty screwy. No. Good night. I'll go to Good bed. night. Well? Your son was awake, so I asked him. Is your son all right? He started out with his name. I told you. What else would you answer? Millie answered, I'm a widow. Now, isn't that Millie? She's a widow in everything she says and does. That's the way she sees herself. That's the way she acts. That's the way she stands. That's the way she speaks. Well, Millie just feels sorry for herself. Exactly. Now, we know that because we've lived in the same house with her for years. But her answer to my question divulged the same thing in a matter of seconds. So? Well, I don't say it's infallible. But I do think it might prove a... A great aid in exploring the human personality. Well, I still say if you ask someone who they are, they're going to answer their name. Millie didn't. Well, Millie's different. Yeah, so are we all. And to find out just how different, ask everyone you know. Go on, ask them. Who are you? Now it's a parlor game. Of course, in the survey, the question was asked of strangers. On the street, at their work, in their homes. The question turned out to be one that relatively few people had ever asked themselves before. Now, your answer may be in phrases, sentences, or anything you wish. Oh, well, I'm just a housewife. I'm nobody. This answer suggests that she has given much of herself to the security of her home. Now, the question is, who are you? Who am I? I am a member of the Millbrook Country Club. I am president of this firm. I'm, uh, I'm an American citizen. Excuse me, sir, but you hesitated just before you said I'm an American citizen. Were you going to say something else? Yes. I'm getting a divorce. When the individual evades or attempts to dodge the question, it indicates that there is something he wishes to hide from himself as well as others. Well, I've never asked myself such a question before. Oh? It kind of stops me. Mm. I guess I don't know who I am, except that I'm kind of mixed up. I feel all alone, by myself. I feel that many people have got it in for me. Like I've got to hold on tight to everything that I've got, or somebody will take it away. I'm just a small speck on this earth. Oh, you're writing all this down. Well, please don't do that. It's people like you that make it difficult for people like me. This answer indicates that the individual is overwhelmed by life. He also feels sorry for himself. He has no confidence in his own powers and resources as an individual. And he doesn't feel able to cope with the world. Mom? Mm-hmm. Do you have five dollars? Um, yeah, honey. It's in there in my bag on the dresser. Oh, honey. Honey, come back here. Uh, what do you want five dollars for? For summer school. Oh, yeah, okay. Go ahead. Wash your hands. Dinner's almost ready. Mrs. Channing? Millie, please, what is this? Grand Central Station? Can't you see I'm trying to concentrate? But you did ask me to let you know when it was 6.30. Oh, yeah, all right, all right, I'm sorry. If you're going to dress for that lecture, you better get started. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. I'm sorry, I snapped at you, too. All right, all right. Lecture? Oh, yes, I have to, Phil. Yeah, the uh, Women's League wanted someone from the university to give a lecture on child welfare. I drew the short straw. I'll be home early. Honey? What? <laughs> well, look, it's not as if I'm going out to play cards with the girls or something. These child welfare lectures are very important. I understand that. Yeah. Margaret? Oh, hello, darling. 
you give Terry five dollars tonight? Yes. What for? Well, he asked me for it. He, he needed it for school. For school? Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. Books or something, I don't know. Don't you think five dollars is a great deal of money to give a 12-year-old boy when you haven't the slightest idea what he needs it for? Oh, for heaven's sake, Phil. What's this all about? The money was for beer. For what? The older boys were having a beer party. The younger ones could get in for five dollars a head. Terry, along with the rest of them, was arrested for disturbing the peace. Is he all right? Yes. Where is he? Upstairs, sleeping oh. it off. Thank heaven. Margaret. Yes. Margaret, don't you think it's rather ironic your son was arrested while you were out lecturing on child welfare? Think about it. Um, eighteen percent consider themselves as a name, and almost the same percentage thought of themselves as a job. Eleven percent regarded themselves as a street address. Well, it's amazing how clearly it shows the individual's degree of self-awareness, how he thinks of himself. Yes. Imagine thinking of yourself as a street address. Or a job. May I use your telephone? Certainly. <clears throat> Terry should be home from school by now. I just want to check. Having trouble with Terry? Oh, no. <laughs> Nothing serious, anyway. Hello, Millie? Is Terry home? Oh, well, that's good. No, no, I was just checking. Hmm? Yes, that'll be all right, but don't let him spoil his dinner, will you? Yes, I'll be home. Yeah, mm hmm Bye. There is one quote I, uh, I want to read to you. I know you'll agree that it's... Clearly, a persecution complex now. Where is it? Uh, but the forum's tonight, aren't you going? Yeah, mm-hmm. But you told her that you were going home for dinner. Oh, so I did. Well, I'll, I'll call her back later. Here's what he said. I never asked myself that question before. Oh, hi, dear. Margaret, what is the matter with you? Nothing. Why? No. Well, there must be something. Millie said you were coming home for dinner. We waited almost an hour. Oh, for you. Phil. I, I, I'm please, just an please idiot. I'm... Please don't say you're sorry because you're not. Apologies just spill out of you. Yet you continue to act with complete disregard for your family. Well, that's not true. Well, it's just that I'm terribly busy right now. Well, I'm aware all. of that. But I think I've been more than patient with your preoccupation with your work. Phil, it's very important work. Let's not argue that. Margaret... Margaret, I thought the episode with Terry and the money would have its effect, but obviously you've forgotten it. Look, I am very tired, and I think this scene is uncalled for. Yes, I'm sure you do. That's the pity of it. Uh, Margaret? Yes? Have I lost you? Don't say things like that. I love you very much. You know that. But not enough. Is that it? Darling, I'm afraid this is going to sound awfully pompous. But, well, I, I don't know any other way to express the way I feel. That this, uh, this project that I'm working on, I, well, I believe is going to benefit all mankind. All mankind? Yes, yes. Don't you think it might be wise if you started with the family unit first? You just won't understand me, will you? I'm trying to. I'm trying very hard to understand you, Margaret. Tell me, what did you answer? Answer? To the question, who are you? Phil, I conduct the survey. I ask the question. Oh, I see. Well, don't you think it's about time you ask it of yourself? All right. All right, Phil. I'm a teacher. I am a person devoted to improving myself and all the conditions around me. I'm Margaret Channing. I am a wife and I'm a mother. I see. You're hurt. Look, I... I know that you'd like me to be a wife first. Terry, no doubt, would like me to be a mother first. And according to some psychologists, if I am well-adjusted, I should think of myself as a name first. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but to me, my work comes first. No, you're wrong. No, Phil. No, I don't know I'm wrong. I know that 
It's pulling us apart. I know that, and I know that's wrong. I, I know that it's making us unhappy, too, and that's wrong, but... Honestly, I, I just don't know how to alter my thinking. I just don't know. Well, if you ever do, let me know. Where are you going? Out of here. I'm leaving you, Margaret. Not that you'll notice five minutes after I'm gone. Phil! I, I, I love you. You've an odd way of showing it. I'll call you tomorrow. We'll talk about the children. Wait, wait a minute. What about the children? I want them. With me, they come first. Well, am I wrong? My work might prove to be beneficial to millions. You told me that. Is that wrong? Should my family come first? I don't know. It's not as though they were neglected, you know. They're not. I love them. I, I love them very much, but... But you want to feel you're involved in more important work? Then you do think I'm wrong. My family should come first, hmm? No. Well, what then? I've gone over all the answers you received to your question, who are you? Yes. It's amazing to me how few people came forth with, who am I? I'm a child of God. Our first duty is to him, our second to our family, and our third to our work. It's his plan. We follow cake mixes, road maps, dress patterns, all to the letter, but not his guaranteed plan for happiness. First things first, Margaret. Not doctor's degrees, they're important, but not foremost. If we put him first, everything else falls into its proper place. Oh, that's so much easier said than done. I'll tell you a secret, Margaret. What? Every morning I ask myself, where are you going? Yeah. But thanks to you, I now ask, who are you and where are you going? And lots of mornings, my answers make me feel like jumping back right under the covers. <laughs> Tempting to know myself as I really am. All right. Who am I? Where am I going? Where am I going? All right, now for the fun. This is the time that we really get to know one another. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Now, let's see the first one. I'm George Hill. I'm an accountant. I married to Mary for seven years. Oh, <laughs> George, what made you underline the seven? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, now let's see the second one. I'm a child of God. I'm Margaret Channing, wife and mother. I'm a teacher. I'm Margaret. That's a beautiful answer. Oh, thank you, Harry. But I'm afraid it wasn't original with me. And that was not my first answer. Oh, no? Oh, no, no. No, you see, the amazing thing about this question is what you can learn about yourself from it. That is, if you really want to learn who you are. Well, now, let's see where yours is, Edward. I'm dying to find out whether you've learned anything from the first time. What? Nothing. I love you. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> oh, Loretta has asked me to tell you that the interpretations of the answers to the questions used tonight were selected for their story value. They would not necessarily apply to any specific person. Now, here is Miss Young. Well, have you decided who you are yet? Good night. See you next week.